My name is Olivier Ronan. I joined Boeing a couple of months ago as part of the Sustainable Aviation Biofuel team, supporting and coating projects from a technical perspective. Um, I'm a, I'm a chemist from an education perspective, and uh, I have a decade of experience in the industry in biotechnology and synthetic biology applied to uh, tires and biofuels. Uh, this was really interesting to me to attend this conference in order to get a better understanding of what the expectation of the industry on biofuels, especially in the EU, in, at the moment where uh, the Renewable Energy Directive number two is being discussed by the Commission. Basically, by 2020, uh, the goal is to be carbon neutral, and by 2050, the objective is to reduce the carbon emission, the CO2 emission, uh, by two as compared to the level, level in 2005. So, in order to get there, we can count on uh, improvement of aircraft and technologies in, uh, in engines. We can also count on improvement of the operations, but there will still be a gap to bridge in order to achieve these objectives. And so we believe that uh, sustainable aviation biofuel, accompanied with the right market measures, will really help in this respect. So what is uh, a sustainable aviation biofuel from this perspective? It's a fuel that is manufactured from biomass, uh, respecting strict sustainability criteria. And, you know, as opposed to other uh, transport, like ground transportation, where we are seeing the emergence of alternative propulsion, such as hybrid technology, electrification, um, we are not seeing that in the near-term future for aviation. So aviation industry will rely solely on liquid fuel for some time. Well, sustainable aviation biofuel has made a tremendous progress uh, in the last decade. Uh, from a technology standpoint, it works. Uh, as of today, we have five pathways that have been approved and that are available. From a demand perspective, we see that the airline are still interested. They have flown more than uh, uh, 40,000 flights already. And we are now seeing actually the airport organizing themselves and putting in place uh, a supply chain in order to be able to propose aviation biofuel. Where we are really lagging behind is on the, um, the large-scale deployment. Uh, and why that? Because um, we have an issue with cost competitiveness with kerosene. Sustainable aviation biofuel today is still more expensive than kerosene, especially in an oil, low oil price context. The European Union uh, should aim to ensure a level playing field with other modes of transportation, especially ground transportation. Uh, and to do so, it's about implementing policy instruments that will really incentivize the market uptake of sustainable aviation biofuel. Um, we, as mentioned before, we, we are being trying to help in terms of educating about our experience and the challenges that we are facing on the ground. Uh, but ideally, what we would like to see is uh, a consistent uh, policy that would last so that business entrepreneur who wants really to invest in stable aviation fuel in Europe can rely on that for the long term. Well, Boeing has been acting as an industry catalyst in order to facilitate the emergence of commercially viable sustainable aviation fuel. In this respect, Boeing has been working along three axes. The first one, fuel approval. When you want to introduce a new technology into a fuel, you need to, uh, to make sure that it is safe for the aircraft and for the passengers. In this respect, Boeing is deeply involved in technical review of those fuels. The second axis is uh, an investment in specific projects uh, locally in some region area of the world. Um, one example is our project in uh, the UAE, where we are part of a consortium with Etihad, with the Mazda Technology Institute and other engine OEMs, where we are combining one of the main issues in this area of the world, which is food security, with sustainable energy. And this project consists in taking seawater to grow fish and shrimps, and from the enriched nutrient water coming out of this aquaculture phase to grow salt tolerant plates, halophytes, and then mangrove. Today, this project is at the hectare level and is already profitable from the aquaculture phase. So this leaves us a huge opportunity in order to valorize the biomass into sustainable energy 
and specifically uh, biofuels for aviation. And finally, the last axis is actually assisting the policy makers into defining and designing the right policy that will enable the market uptake of sustainable aviation biofuel.